We've had the pigs ever since I've been here. There's a creek that runs through here, the little Buffalo Creek. And they, but they were always kind of nomadic. They came through our property and passed, you know, from the Gloucester area right on past us. And they looked for the acorns or whatever it was they wanted and they move on. And uh, we didn't have them a uh, permanent resident uh, until recently. And in the last year or two, for whatever reason, we got them uh, just to, they stayed. They started uh, doing damage. Uh, we had some real bad droughts after Katrina and, and Gustav. And uh, they started, uh, you know, taking up residence because we've got the plant. I mean, that's what we're all about at the Arboretum is the plants. And so they started taking up residence. We do have the creek, you know, for the moisture, and we've got a lot of hardwoods for the acorns and stuff like that. And so they, they started to uh, just stay here and started to do, you know, damage and wallow like they're doing here and, and just um, got to the point that I had to start taking action. I didn't really pay them any attention up until the last year or two because it was just something that didn't, didn't affect us. I'm going to turn the program over to him. And uh, he's got a presentation that he's going to do. Then we'll open it up for questions. Uh, we've got the wildlife, uh, the, the law enforcement guys here, Mr. Jimmy Hudson, so he can answer the, the law enforcement questions because uh, all, all we're called to do is educate. Uh, we've got a problem with wild hogs in the state. Their numbers are expanding, uh, their, their habitat and the, the areas that they haven't been in, they're moving into, so we've got a major problem. Reproductive rates are extremely high and survival rates, so these things have gone from 19 ca uh, counties in the state to 39 counties in about five years. So they're destroying some crops, they're destroying some livestock, and, and we've got to get landowners working together with government agencies and so forth and so on, try to get these numbers under control if we can. We're in Liberty, Mississippi at the Harrison Building, and what we did tonight was a, a wild hog uh, seminar, and we brought in one of our extension uh, wildlife specialists, uh, Mr. Bill Maley. Uh, he's headquartered at, uh, at Raymond, and we basically talked about wild hogs and uh, what you can do uh, for them, how to control them, uh, talked about their behavior, the biology, uh, the damage that they do, uh, control methods, and we also brought in the Department of Wildlife and Fisheries to handle all the, the legal issues because there are some legal issues even though uh, a, a wild hog has been placed on the nuisance list, there are still some legality issues and some law issues that have to be handled and we had a lot of questions tonight uh, to the wildlife officer that was here and uh, hopefully uh, we can get this situation better under control. It's a situation and a problem that's probably not going to go away anytime soon. We, but we burned out the traps uh, mostly. We, we got lucky this morning and you were able to film a catch but it's been uh, quite a while. It's been months since we caught any in a trap. We, uh, we had some success at first. We, we didn't know what we were doing. We didn't have anybody train us. We, we bought a trap and put a trap out and put corn in it and that's all we knew to do. Um, basically we weren't careful to camouflage the trap. We weren't careful uh, with our scent. We weren't you know, careful in any way. We thought it was fairly easy uh, from some of the, you know, basically from what we've seen on TV. And it wasn't, it, it, we did catch some, but we also educated the others. And as soon as we educated the others, it started to taper off real fast. And now it's ba basically the, the ones that we caught this morning are the first one we've caught in a long time. Back say, eight, nine, ten years ago, they were sexually matured about 12 to 14 months. But now, six or seven months. They can have two and a half litters per year, okay? So if they can sexually mature six months, the females in this first litter, guess what they're doing? They're being bred, okay? So population will explode, and they average a little over four pigs per litter. Population can double in a year. All right, and this is just a statistical thing they put in here, so you have to you know, hold school all year. Right, so this sow has two baby pigs. In five years, that will make 43 hogs. Bar nothing happened. You ain't seen nothing yet, my friend. Those start breeding and reproducing in 10 years, 605 hogs. That's hard to... Now, now this is not going to happen because we got things working on them, but watch this in 20 years. 122,000 hogs. That's statistically, that sow and her offspring their offspring, their offspring can produce that many that, There's no one landowner, one agency is going to be able to, to, to get a handle on this situation. We're going to have to have cooperation between private landowners, the timber companies, the government agencies, and a cooperative effort to try to get a handle on this population explosion. I heard it, whether it was communicating between hunters, or between landowners, or between the law enforcement officials, but communicating. 
communicate. There will always be that that one or two or three percent of the situation when you get in a situation you ain't got nobody to communicate with. Then I think you'll probably be okay as long as you do what you feel like the best you can do. They can just about destroy anything that they decide that they want to destroy. Uh, as we saw tonight, learned tonight, uh, there's very few things that a hog won't eat. <clears throat> so what that says is if you say, well, I don't put out corn or I don't do this or I don't do that, uh, I've got pine trees or I've got uh, uh, some type of horticulture uh, crop. Well, hogs root them up too. So uh, they eat what they can, forage what they can. They eat grass, they eat, they eat meat, they're an omnivore. So they eat a little bit, they'll eat anything. And so that's why we say that there's not anything really that a hog won't tear up. And the hunting is, is even more difficult than the traffic, trapping. Uh, basically, it, after the first time you shoot at them, it's nocturnal. Uh, and you've got to stay up all night and then you've got to work the next day. You know, it wouldn't be so bad if you didn't have a job or something. But if you've got to work, then, then it's difficult. So both, both trapping and hunting are, are just not that easy to control. And based on what, what you saw at the class we went to the other night, the way they multiply, if you're not making a lot of headway, you're not doing any good. We're having two, two and a half litters per year. And by the time that second litter's born, some of those young sows or gilts in that first litter are breeding back. So it's really changed and the explosion is happening.